Monday, October 4th, 2021. If we could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you could please, in your thoughts of silence, think of those folks that are uh, surviving breast cancer. Or, uh, it's uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We can think of all those folks who are surviving. Because of the changes in the Sunshine Act, because that's not an item on the agenda, we will first have to have a motion to amend the agenda to add that particular item. So that's for a motion and second on that. I'll make the motion. I'll okay. second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. You can roll call on that one now. You can do it. Okay. You can do a consent. You can do a consent. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. okay. So now the agenda has been amended to reflect mm -hmm. that. That's not the vote on the actual subdivision that will happen. When do you want to do that, John? You want to do it now? Yeah. That's fine with the commissioners. That's fine. You can have an entertain the motion. Okay. We're motion. We can approve the sub subdivision and the, uh, the subdivision for Hartley King. Uh, subdivision for Hartley King. Uh, have a motion, please. So moved. Uh, Rob. <coughs> second. Sorry. Uh, second. We have uh, Dr. Walk. Any, any discussion? Quick right? comment. This was recommended by the planning commission. It is just a simple subdivision. It just was uh, neglected to be put on the agenda for in time. So, any other discussion? Just a little more detail on it, from John. Yeah, um, a uh, the joint <coughs> property owner is purchasing part of the property of the Old Mon Valley Petroleum property, and they need a lot line adjustment to adjust to add that property to uh, the adjoining property and remove it from the main. Old Mon Valley Petroleum property. Okay. So it's a subdivision, but also a lot line. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Before we, we vote, any public comment on that? I want to make sure it's a public an opportunity. If anyone has a comment on that. Okay, let's do a front roll call on that. Commissioner okay. Lyons. Yes. Commissioner Quisman. Yes. Commissioner Bethlehem. Yes. Commissioner Algieri. I'm going to abstain. Commissioner Waterman. Yes. yes. Commissioner Foyer. Yes. President Rosser. Yes. Motion passes. And anything else? Uh, no. Thank you. Uh, KLH, Commissioner Meyer. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, circulated the uh, RIP report, the Elizabeth and Eastwood project is uh, moving. Obviously, it's slow go right now, as I reported last month. We're just doing uh, excavation. Once they get down to uh, finish grade, those things will start coming up. I don't know how to do it. The uh, painting is complete. Um, we talked to uh, Paul about that. Um, there's just some ceiling and back filling that needs to be done. Um, and the final state of work will close that out. Stony Brook, um, we did complete the survey last week. Um, that's moving through design. Mansfield Storm Sewer, Mr. Raccoon is the new sense of easement overview. There's one to get the easement in place, then we'll go ahead and bid that project. Um, Jacktown Road Bridge, um, looking through the design. Um, we, uh, we're going to be working with Verizon to move that the pole that's there, um, which will, should be a little, little tedious or a little harder to deal with sometimes than the, um, than the power company, but that won't be a big deal. It's just we've notified them and just started working towards the So that the design.
none of that's ongoing. Um, <clears throat> moving along with that action pretty quick. And one item that's not on here is the roof, um, garage roof. Did have one more engineer come out and look at it. Um, it's in drafting right now. We're starting to um, work on the, on the uh, plans and the specifications will follow. So I don't have enough for any questions. From any questions for uh, Mr. Roger? <clears throat> Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, please report. And then Chief, you can add to the monthly report. Well, Chief, would like to welcome you back. Again, in a different way. Now you're here. Yes. Anyway, so. You heard some great things, and I just want to commend you for your uh, excellent means of communication. I mean, I, I, you're doing a great job of communicating what's happening in the township, and, and that means a lot, I think, to all the commissioners that we're getting that information. And, and, uh, and uh, really good, and it's the information that we you know we need to know, so we do appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, before, uh, I know Doug Townsend is here tonight. He was here to speak about the EMS. He, but Doug, do you want to get up right now and speak? I mean, that your emergency management and place emergency management sort of lines in, in the same way. So, I'd like to speak right now if you'd like to. Yeah, the microphone. Thank you. Okay. Can everyone hear me okay? Okay, first and foremost, uh, this past October 1st, uh, three days ago, uh, marked the fifth year anniversary of the merger of Elizabeth Township Area Ambulance and the Jefferson Hills Area Ambulance Service. To say that there were not some speed bumps and roadblocks along the way, uh, I'd be remiss. There were several. But uh, we worked very diligently uh, with this community and with the previous commissioner board and this commissioner board and those such as Joanne that were on both boards along this way. It was very, very clear to us that the main need of Elizabeth Township in regards to emergency medical services was a consistent response time from the 911 Swiss Way base. Uh, we, had, uh, we did not have the means to purchase the building outright at the time. Uh, we did make our monthly obligations. Uh, we began a meeting uh, with the Southeast Regional, our executive board, uh, which uh, Commissioner Roger and uh, Jay Blake Curran were both uh, sitting members of. Uh, and we uh, developed um, and asked, if you will, this community to assist us by paying off that debt obligation for that station. Then COVID hit for all of us, right? Now we're wearing masks, we can't meet in person, it's virtual, and it basically lagged. Um, I came back with some new city commissioners uh, in executive session, we talked back through it. Matt, we've had how many meetings over the time, and Bart, and uh, I'm just here today on behalf of Southeast Regional EMS to thank each and every one of you for your commitment to EMS in Elizabeth Township. I hear your message, I hear your voice loud and clear, and we fully intend on keeping every area of our obligation, which includes a minimum of one advanced life support ambulance at that station 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days out of the year. At, and most times I get like, there's more. There's supervisors there, there's other activities going on. We've interfaced with the fire departments remarkably over here. They're great to work with the police. I welcome the new police chief and uh, look forward to a strong working relationship with you as well, sir. And I can tell you, and I, I, I hope you see with the month to month reports, your, your uh, response time in emergencies had remained pretty constant. So I just wanted to take a moment of your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the other thing I have, other than uh, my written report I have for the public is on the 18th of October, we'll start picking up leave. It doesn't look like it right now, but by then there'll be calls that need picked up. So. That's some good news. I don't have anything to give you because my trees are already here. So. Six 
6,000 gallons of biosolids to Keith Port. And to date, all uh, effluent parameters for the off river are in compliance. I can address any questions on the report. Any questions? Yeah. I'll look to you, Kyle. Right up. You're the man. You're the man. That's a good question. Appreciate it. Uh, we have no report from uh, Elizabeth Township Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, uh, the only report that I have is I believe next month we'll be able to ratify the police uh, collective bargaining agreement. We had come to a tentative agreement with the police officer. Um, it was actually uh, great negotiations, and uh, we're very happy, and I think they're very happy it was, it was able to be worked out. So I expect to have that on the agenda for next month. Uh, outside of that, everything else I had was uh, discussed previously in executive session. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Butler, uh, Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm going to run through a few things in my report, and then I have a couple of discussion items down below on the agenda. Uh, so I want to announce that there's a Halloween parade on uh, October 23rd, and it's Saturday, I believe. I'd like to know when I want to start the clock out there. A lot of fun. Okay. And there will yeah, be a parade in front of our Trump, Trump retreat where you can uh, register your vehicle and get on streets to the children if you like. And then uh, after that, there's some hot dogs. So with that being said, 
as chairman of the Code Enforcement Committee, I had a major code enforcement issue that I asked to be put on as a discussion item that was removed. And it, w it involved Blackdale Park, which is even in Ward 3, and the Buena Vista Boat Launch. We have an ordinance, and correct me if I'm wrong, that governs the height of grass and weeds. Okay, and if you don't cut your grass to let it get three feet tall, you get fined. It could be $50 or even how many hundreds of dollars a day if you don't do this. Well, the township owns Blackdale Park and the Buena Vista Boat Launch, and if you look at it, it's a disgrace. You know, and I'm not blaming the road for their, uh, you know, being killed right now, especially with the things, the workload that we give them. But I would like to have it put on as a discussion item, and I don't see any problem with having to put on. And I don't understand why it was removed, for one, okay? And secondly, how do I get to add something to the agenda? Because there are a lot of non-agenda items that I would like to discuss, but we never, as commissioners, get the opportunity to have it put on. So who took that discussion item off, and why? Well, I would say, uh, Mr. Christmas, that when it was explained to me, it was about putting a boat launch in, is what I was understanding. Under so you have a report, but what's, what's your concern, sir? What, what, what well, I would, so if I would have had it put on as a discussion yeah. item, I would have asked the road crew, I know that you have a list taller than me of things that you would like to do. Now is the time that the leaves are falling, and you can try to whack down and clear some of the area over there that is a mess. Okay, that's all I wanted. I didn't want to go on that. But if it would have been well, made a discussion item, I could have been able to discuss it and explain it well, instead of it being dictated by you. So, well, again, I apologize if it was in this communication because that certainly was not my intent. And if you have issues that need to be addressed under the code, we certainly want to address those and make them safe for the community. So, again, if there was anything, there was, there was no intent to uh, silence you about the opportunity. So, is there anything else you want to add? Not to that topic, but I would like to know when am I able to discuss things that I would like to discuss. You certainly can. That are not agenda. Again, I, I, you have the floor. You have the floor. You, you speak what you like to speak about. I mean, you want, if you want to go through your report on code enforcement, is there anything else that you have on the code? The code enforcement report, I would, we, we have demolitions okay. coming up. Greg's discussing yeah. that. I'd like to ask you, Paul, to visit that. Sure. The only other topic that I have to discuss. I think that the township needs to videotape its meetings. I do not think that it's fair to rely on citizen journalists, freelance journalists, to come out, purchase equipment, put up a tripod, take time away from their families and whatnot, and then post it on their web. I don't think that that's fair. I don't see any issue. We had a motion, I don't know how, four years ago to purchase a video camera and it didn't go through. But I think that it would be a very good idea to consider videotaping our meetings, having John run it, and then put it on our website, because there are people who have COVID that are still fearful of coming to meetings, and we're not doing it virtually anymore, so they don't have that opportunity. I think that's a good idea. The, uh, the meetings over the Zoom were all recorded and available, um, and, and actually I found that helpful myself. Um, do we have equipment to do that, John? I know Scott does. No, we that. currently don't. Several years ago, the board considered the idea and asked me to get some quotes from Hollywood Sound and Music to get our audio system about getting, you know, the remote cameras that we could operate potentially to record it. Um, I can see how I can find the old photograph and if you more would like that to follow up with them because I have to contact them for a microphone repair. Or if the board wants is interested in that, give me some direction and I will. I mean, it's called what type of camera do you use? What's that? I just do a regular iPad mini. That's what I thought. And that's really cool. The, I don't think we have to go high tech. In, in all fairness, the auto qual audio quality is terrible on this, oh, okay. especially when you guys don't use your microphones. Okay, right. that's good feedback. <laughs>
that's fine. It's not so much that. It's just the fact that I'm a commissioner. I was elected. I like to speak about something. I like to have it put on the agenda. And have it taken off. I didn't think it was perfect. Well, again, there was a misunderstanding. You just had your, your voice. Anything else you want to say? No, sir. Uh, Joanne, Parks and Recreation. Any reports? No. to say a few things about the American Rescue Plan funding because Greg and Jess work on that. A lot of what I have for tonight's meeting is based off of that, and I would like her to go ahead and give an outline of that real quick, if you may. Right now? Yeah, right now, sure. So, um, if you recall, President Biden passed the legislation that uh, gave uh, American Rescue funding to all municipalities, states, and counties. Our share of that, based on our population, Total is one million three hundred fifty-five thousand six hundred seventy-five dollars and sixty-four cents. We have currently received half of that. We'll receive the second half in about probably at this point four to six months. And um, the challenge now is to um, determine. There's it's kind of limited. You know, the guidelines are broad but limited. If that makes sense. There's four major categories of uh, ways you can spend this money right now, according to the federal government. So I'm gonna read those off verbatim from a uh, really good uh, really good guideline that I, it's from the, um, no, I knew I was gonna forget what it stood for. It's, the, it's basically the account, the, the account, the national accounting organization, so accounts for municipalities, and I did send it to the commissioners uh, as a PDF. So here, here's where we can spend it. Eligible uses for funds include revenue replacement for the provisions of government services to the extent of the reduction in revenue due to COVID-19 public health emergency relative to revenues collected in the most recent fiscal year prior to the emergency. So basically, it's, it's the replacement of revenue due to COVID-19 public health emergency. The second category, COVID-19 expenditures or negative economic impacts of COVID-19 including assistance to small businesses, households, and hard-hit industries, and economic recovery. The fourth is premium pay for essential workers, and then the last is investments in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. So with that said, President Rocco and President, uh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Roderick asked me to kind of explain that to the public as a general overview so that the commissioners can maybe open up a preliminary discussion of what the funds would be. Any questions on that part of it? Okay, we have uh, three years to spend it. It has to be spent by, it, it has to be spent by, I don't want to get my date wrong. Uh, it's basically the end of 2020. So, and then there's a couple reporting. They just, I know they just shifted the reporting. The first reporting on my part was, um, <coughs> I do want to thank uh, Greg and Jess. I know you guys put a lot of work into this. Um, I know we had a lot of phone calls back and forth, and you guys got this in under the deadline. And you know, just for the public's knowledge, not, there was a lot of work with this. It wasn't like they just sent the check just because we were a municipality. Across the state, there were 85 uh, municipalities and boroughs that didn't get the application in and didn't get any money. And I, I do want to give Greg thanks because I know it was a lot of work and a lot of effort for that. So, thank you. But on 
those 85, there, there will be some additional funds that will be coming. Um, I talked to Allegheny County, um, the director of the economic development. They just don't have a number yet. There will not be another application process, but they're going to reallocate from those 85 communities that did make the deadline to all the boroughs and municipalities that did, that are under 50,000 residents. So we may be getting another seven to eighty thousand dollars depending on where where that's at, but there will not be enough application process. It, it'll be automatic once they carry that out. So that's that's something else that's going to be coming through too. Um, also, while we're going into the um, the public safety issue with this, Allegheny County also got money on top of the municipality. So they also give money to the county. And they have 300 plus million dollars, and they have decided to allocate 23.5 million to public safety, which is um, police, EMS, and fire. Five million dollars is going to every fire department in Allegheny County, which comes out to about 25 thousand dollars a fire department. So each one of our departments is going to receive 25 thousand dollars from the county. In addition to that, they also allocated 18.5 million for fire, EMS, and police for radios. It's either a base radio in the vehicle or a portable radio. It comes out to about $3,000 a radio that they, that they budgeted. So right now that's in county legal. There will be an application process. You will, you will have to apply, it will be a short form. As soon as it comes out of county legal, I, I told uh, Chief Pasco and Chief Monick and all the fire chiefs, I will let them know as soon as we the applications are available through the county that we're able to apply for for those radios. Because I mean, that, that's a great help. It's, it's, it's money that's there, it's available, and it's, it's nice to have. So that's, that's coming from the county. Um, I want to also talk about we have on our public safety and police board, Commissioner Beckwitz, Rich Algeri, and myself sit on that board. We recently had a meeting with the fire department chiefs. We met with Chief Evans, Chief Walters, and Chief Davenport. And we just had, we had that meeting recently. And a couple of recommendations that came out of that meeting, and I'd like to discuss those with the board. Um, the first recommendation with the American Rescue Plan funding, um, the, our board, the, that committee is recommending to this board that we donate some amount of funds out of the American Rescue Plan money that we're getting towards the fire departments, and we're going to turn it over to budget finance to see what kind of work where we're at, what we're able to do. And like I said, if we can give it all to those guys, I mean, I know the fire department suffered greatly because fish fry and the different things that were there. But there's other places money needs to go, but we're definitely willing to help. And I'm certainly our recommendation to the Food Board Commissioners that we do help these guys out. Um, we also recommend that we also help the police department out also, in addition, if there's anything that they can use outside of, outside of the budget. So again, budget finance will take a look at that, see what's there, but something that's outside of your budget, you know, we're gonna look at allocating some of those funds also. We're gonna make that recommendation to the board. The last thing that I, I like the recommendation to the board, uh, it was a great meeting. We had a great meeting with the chiefs. Uh, communication is always great. And we're recommending that we do this on a monthly basis so we have more communication. And we would also like, and it's not gonna be a decision-making board, it's just going to be a board that we're going to take and we're going to make recommendations to this board of commissioners. It, it was a really good meeting, very informative. Um, I would also, I would recommend that we have our, our um, public safety committee, you know, the three commissioners on that board and the three fire chiefs. And also would like to invite Chief Pasco to that board and Chief Hunt. That way we have communication with all of public safety. That way, you know, and you guys don't have to make it every month, but we, I will notify you guys when we have that meeting, and we can communicate with everybody together. If there's any chinks in the arm or anything needs fixed, then we'll come back. If there's anything we can do from this board, our goal is going to be recommend 
this board how we fix things. So that way we just have an informal meeting to make some recommendations. So I'm going to ask the President Morocco, since you have the authority to appoint the board, yeah. I'm going to ask you if, you, if that's yeah, okay. I, I think it's a great idea, and I appreciate you and Rich taking the initiative to meet. And I'm sure people at that meeting. No, but, but certainly appreciate that initiative. I think that's organically something that's good. I would appreciate it. Try to set it up before our commissioner meeting, Good. so we can. And, and I do know, and I do want to mention something else that came out of that meeting, which they, the fire chiefs asked us to update our um, fire pit because it's over 10 years old. The ISO ratings, they're, they're going to get an ISO audit in February of next year, and they asked if um, you know if we do set this up in meetings that um, we can have. Um, John Sells to come to the next meeting and talk about that. And we're already in the process of updating it. The board's already approved advertising. Yes. Yeah. We're just finishing traffic and just trying to keep it up to date over there. That's for advertising. We're meeting tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yes. And that's tomorrow, actually. Dr. Rocco, I would be more than happy to serve on that. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. Thanks for the sponsorship. Yeah, appreciate you going with it. Thank you. Um, and again, thanks for the leadership you guys meet with them. And I think after last month, uh, when they spoke to us and their passion for what they do and you know, their intent to keep us safe, I think certainly uh, following up like that immediately and, and hearing that and, and making out a concerted effort to help work with them. And we, we, we appreciate your thank you. And I, I do have one more thing. So, since Chief Pasco came here to, to look at the public safety, you know, I would like to thank Chief Pasco for all the effort that he put forth in working with our board to maintain, the, to help us maintain the Apple permanent base in Elizabeth Township. And I, it took some work and it, it was, well, we're glad to do it, but I would like to thank Chief Pasco because he put a lot of work into this. <laughs> I didn't find out until 4.30 today from an individual that there was a, a you know, an actual, I guess there was a meeting tonight, but I wasn't sure. And an individual told me there was a meeting, but he didn't have, he wasn't able to get the uh, agenda either, okay? That, it, this is a problem, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leap forward and talk to us. Joanne will agree with me, probably 10, 12 years ago, I, I kept bringing up the flat high resolution camera to video the meetings and have good microphones and right now you need to get the kind of mac microphones that attach you attach to your head that are really you know accurate you guys weren't holding mics up to your face back then when gina rolled them they everybody lay back in their seats back there this place was filled with people and nobody could hear they had no idea and scott's telling you right now he's taping the meetings and the voice is terrible. You can't make up. I checked, and I don't have a list handy. I don't know how many communities in Western Pennsylvania that have their meetings posted either the next day or two days later, the videos that people can get. This is ridiculous where at this, point, at this point in time with this community. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Secondly, I want to talk about Grants, which is one of my pet peeves. 
I found out about in Hemphill Township, they got a $4.3 million grant called SAFER, administered by FEMA, and it's for staffing, adequate fire, and emergency response. I, and I wanted to talk to the fellow that was here at the last meeting that spoke for the, uh, you know, the fire departments. Did they know anything about it? Did anybody here know anything about it? You did? Talk to the Central was actually going to get. Okay. Did, did we get any money or anything? You Central, know? Central Fireball was probably going to get some money through that. I, I can't tell what you're saying. Central Fireball is, is, has been awarded that. They, they've been awarded um, for the, that, that grant. Do you know how much we're talking about? I don't, I don't know what the numbers are off the top. Okay. I know they have a lot of fire departments in Hensville Township, so I don't know how much each one, but it's strictly for staffing and training of new members and existing members of fire equipment. And uh, correct know, me if I'm wrong, though, uh, that, feels, that feels a paid situation, I believe. Is that right? That feels, that's a paid fire department. That's not, not volunteer. No, this, these are all volunteers, too. In Hemphill? Hemphill, yeah, not, they're not all, uh, you know, uh, okay, but, okay. yeah, I, they might be 10 fire departments out there. I really don't know. I know there's a lot, and they they got 4.3 million dollars. But anyway, so that's my two things. And I did not conspire with him when he talked about it. Probably, but I like what you said. <laughs> Thanks. I just want to say that the agenda was posted on the website Friday before four o'clock, and then we did a minimus change today, and we reposted. Uh, Russell Rubanek. Hi, I'm <clears throat> Russell Rubanek, 325 High Street. And uh, basically, I want to talk about one of the things you changed on the agenda. Yeah, that was the one you changed. Yeah, which is the trick or treat day. Mm -hmm. I checked with my wife, and she says the trick or treat has been on October 31st from six to eight for a very long time. And personally, we don't see any reason to change that. So I just wanted to say we were in favor of keeping it the way it's always been. There it is. Thank you. Thank you. Patty Hoffman. Patty Hoffman. Everybody is aware of the fact that the, United, uh, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court has ruled that hydraulic drilling is an industrial um, capacity. So why are we continuing to look at getting more industrial in, a, in an area that is not industrial? We don't have to do it. We have already given enough for the people that live up there that they shouldn't have to do more drilling up there and make it terrible for these people to live. It's not a quiet little structure. It's not heartwarming and great. All the lights, all the traffic, all the noise. We do not, as a township, have to do this. We have already done our fair share of mineral drilling. We do not need to approve another conditional use for hydraulic fracturing. There's a lot of case law that's going on in the, in the state right now that goes along with what I'm saying to you. It's time that we looked at the health, the safety, and welfare of the people in this township and not look at the dollar sign that somebody's putting in front of you. That is not even closely related to what we were talking about in the comprehensive plan. I was at that meeting. We were talking about continuing to put more drilling in our township. We already have pipelines. We already have drilling. We have given above and beyond that the people of this township need to give. Thank you. Thank you. Scott Taylor. Hey, 
the air vent, it's got kind of the 304 Mohawk drive. Um, we'll start off with the Olympus uh, additional wells um, that we just talked about that have the full level padding. Um, why was this not a discussion here prior to going to plan? Because I think procedurally, when you guys get your notice, you guys have a discussion and you guys refer it back to plan, not the other way around. I could be wrong on that. Um, because these wells are subject to conditional use, this will be a great opportunity for the commissioners to assess the existing conditions that they put in place already. Are the current conditions appropriate? Do they need to be modified? Was the directive given, you know, that was, goes back to the other question, was this directive given to the planning commission to research some of this, all the conditions and so on? Uh, I, did, I know when from the planning commission, I wasn't able to attend and ask some of these questions there. Um, obviously, they passed it along because now you guys are talking about it. Um, so if anyone here or the planning commission on your behalf talked to or requested feedback from residents, at a minimum, the immediate neighboring property owners, or to see if anything needs to uh, be addressed to help protect them. Noise levels, lighting, air quality, this is all your primary objective as commissioners, not to bow to these guys. A good place to start would be with our code enforcement. Has code enforcement performed any spot checks while they've been out there drilling? So there would be some feedback there. Uh, I see some nods here, so I'm going to follow some ranking notes to get some of that information. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that he is. I really am. Uh, because some of the things that I've seen just in this last round of drilling, one of the things we talked about and they promised they were going to use was electronic pumps. This last round they used diesel pumps. You were reading, I was reading personally, on Butler's Golf Course, 70 decibels at Butler's Golf Course. Imagine what the balls feel like and the ashes feel like right next to this. That's your responsibility. You guys can change that with your conditions. Force them to use hydraulic or electric pumps. Force them to do their hydraulic fracking during the daylight, not all night long. They're no longer drilling, which is they have to do around the clock. They don't have to frack in the middle of the night. They can do that during the day. But that's up to you guys to have these conversations, not just pass it back to planning, have them kick it back to you and on our merry way. Um, non agenda items. Uh, we talked about the microphones. I, I beg of you people, please use your microphones. I've got bad hearing, I can't hear in the back. Um, municipal zoning map, December of 2018. You guys voted to change the map, the zoning map. Has that been revised and updated yet? That's an engineer's thing there. As far as I know, it's still got. A map that's two years out of date posted on the website. I think municipal planning code says you've got to have that done in about 60 days, maybe. I might be wrong on that one, too. Um, and if we could touch real quickly on municipal notices. Late in 2018, we had some discussions. I asked for it personally to have these municipal notices posted on the website for public to see them. Matt, you and I went back and forth. I got the minutes right here. There is no legal obligation for you guys to post these things and make public aware of them, other than a general note that's supposed to be come from Mr. Butler or whoever's in that seat at the time to at least let public know that you received something. That has not happened since the middle of 2019. You guys have gotten a lot of notices since then, including Huntley's additional bill. I knew this was coming because I get the notices from PADEP. I keep in touch with them regularly. So can we, and I asked for it at that time to make something official, an official policy on behalf of the township to post these things on the website when you receive them so that we can know what we're looking at and talking about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Construction of the, the uh, salt pit, um, that was all behind the building. And 
didn't get a whole lot of use from what I understand. Uh, it was also no longer an eyesore. Uh, but in order to make room to do the salt shed, the, those bins were placed up front, and it has become nothing but a problem for DPW since then. Uh, at various times, people have loaded that up with uh, grass clippings, uh, dog shit, and anything else that they can make miserable over there. And recently, I've had a couple of uh, phone calls from DPW employees that have witnessed contractors coming in there and dumping small dump trucks full of branches into those bins because they can. Uh, I wanted to bring this up in front of the board because I think it's time to eliminate those bins. We need to get them out of there. Uh, I don't know the long-term options for residents to bring branches or whatever, but we need to have a discussion right now on what we're going to do because that's just an eyesore and it's a problem. It takes up a lot of Paul's time and DPW guys are tired of dealing with it. Paul, do we have any concept properties maybe we want clean fuel to be dropped out? Do you use this alternative? Uh, Something to think about. Yeah, but I think that would turn into a bigger mess. Okay, I agree with Kyle, it's a big eyesore. And that's not exactly yeah. clean fill. You know, stuff that has to degrade like that is, is not fill. That yeah. is a problem. And, uh, and unless it was well camera, you know what it would turn into. People would, people would be dumping their, their, their construction materials in there very quickly. Uh, it is a problem. I, I, we have to eliminate this. This is just terrible out here. And, and it's paying everybody's neck. Anybody shaking their head? Is everybody okay with uh, asking Paul to do that? Yes. I'm sorry. No, there, there was also some talk, Greg, that statewide that we will, the township's required to do to help the residents to dispose of. You said it was under recycling. No, I can't see that being recycled. Well, can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, we just completed the uh, we just completed the uh, recycling grant for this year with the DEP, and it referenced Act 101, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but that's the, that's from 1982, the Recycling Act that requires first class townships to offer not only plastic and glass recycling but organic recycling. But we do have a program twice a year where we, you know, the, the road does travel each street, every single street in the township to pick up leaves and debris and things like that, or again, I think that would satisfy the act, uh, but I need to make sure. Uh, this is just, in my opinion, possibly just a bonus for organic recycling. They, they call it recycling because we're not, I don't know, I don't know what else you would do with it, you have to recycle it. But uh, that's that's what you and I spoke about? Yeah, that's what we spoke about. It's anything but recycling. It's basically dumping it here and then we dump it somewhere else. And so it's, none of it's getting recycled. And so the wording in that Act 101 has to be looked at a little more closely, but I have to feel the intent of that act is not to make us collect grass clippings and stinky stuff and save it around and get it back out as compost. That ain't recycling. Let's well, say you, Paul. I was going to ask Paul, have you seen an increase over the last time? I mean, I, it seems like I've, it, it because it's visible now. Yeah. It seems, I mean, that's 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 problem. Yeah. Right. yeah, it's been. Before it was behind the building. Yeah, it was maybe once a month we met, now we're like three times a month. And that's, you know, just grabbing branches individually. And that's right. Yeah. Wait. Sanitizer, try not to touch your face. 
those share employees or candy bags and trick or treat in smaller groups. So that's the only thing I didn't mention earlier. Uh, just a couple of recommendations. Great, thanks. Uh, ARPA funding, I did mention that. Any questions on that or any further discussion from the commissioners? I think we'll take out the project and see how we can do some of those things. Last set of motions, uh, President Rocker will ask me to just give a summary of where we are with the demolition. I, I think that's a good idea. Yes. So I'll, I'll try to make this short and sweet. Um, we, so last year, at the beginning of this year, we just finished seven demolitions. Um, and we've done many prior to this, but these are the ones we just finished on a takeoff contract. They're completely finished. We currently have four properties that have already been through the bidding process for takeoff. Jaycock just recently contacted the winning bidder, asking for documentation, all the testing has been done. So those are just about ready to go anytime. There's four of them. So then there was a big uh, grant right that myself and Jess worked on. There was 12 properties included in that grant. Um, and that's called the Act 152. That's the, through the tally. That's where all of them some of the funding, um, I'm not sure where the funding comes from, but we, we uh, wrote a grant for 12 properties. We got approved for two of them, and we're just beginning that process of uh, you know, clearing those. They're already cleared legally, but you know, the bid specs and everything, we're going to start sending those through the shape of. Uh, but that leaves 10 that were not, um, not grant funded. So um, what I suggested um, through committees is that since we're getting two funding for two of them, that we consider just acting on the remaining ten, since we've already had uh, we've already had illegal clearances done on them, they're all ready to go. Uh, my suggestion was to deplete what we call the demolition fund, which is currently at about forty thousand dollars, and then use the remaining funds or use the remaining sixty to eighty thousand out of the capital fund to get rid of the remaining ten properties as you know for uh, funding. Just to get this would end, in my opinion, and John can comment if he would like, the worst of the worst, in my opinion. This is the big heavy list that we've been trying to get rid of for quite a while. So I'm throwing that out there publicly and to the commissioners for consideration for possibly putting that on a motion next month. So the total cost uh, to the township, well, we have that dedicated 40,000, it would be an additional, in my opinion, 60 to 80,000 to get it done. And then lastly is um, for, the, for the CB year 48 for shake off again, we, we submitted an application for five more projects. So that means over the last year and a half, that's 11, 21, 23, 28 properties we're addressing. So that's a huge chunk. So please consider that and uh, we'll see what happens next week. And Greg, um, and Greg, do you have any objection to putting that out for bid now as opposed to waiting for the next one? Well, that's not my decision. Do you have any objection? I don't have any objection. Okay. I'd like to make a motion. You, can't, you, you can't do that. Can't do that. <laughs> well, I, I, have, I have to have it on the agenda for the record. It got taken off, just like the other thing. I don't believe that was requested. I requested, to, I requested that the demolition be voted on for it to be advertised. Well, it's funny. You know, we can have it. If you're in agreement, we can have it.
no, you still need an extension. Never mind, you still need an amendment. So I don't know if you want to treat this as an amendment to the agenda. <laughs> um, I know, I hate this process, but new regulations will leave the straps or arms here. Yeah, I don't want to get to that. I, okay, so <laughs> what I would suggest is first to entertain a motion to amend the agenda to add a motion to advertise for a conditional use hearing. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Consent, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Now, a motion to advertise for public hearing, conditional use hearing for Olympus Energy, additional law will follow B for November the 1st at 6 o'clock p.m. So moved. Uh, Rob, second. Sir. Tom Watt. Any uh, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. So, Dr. Rock, with this question now, uh, we changed this twice tonight and it seemed to be okay. And I'm in favor of moving along these demolition properties as well. Okay. Can we amend the agenda to go ahead and you have to do that too? You have, do you know which one you're specifically identifying? Yeah, I have a lot of law covers to the addresses. And there's going to be a total of 10. Okay. So what do you, what do you want to do? Advertise for bids for that? Is that what you're, is that what you're, is that what's the motion? Yeah. 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 Well, first of all, we have to suspend whatever you just suspended. I mean, once, once we, once you vote on amending the agenda, what's the actual motion you're going to vote for? The motion to advertise the 10 properties listed by Craig Butler after bid. You have the specs? No. That would be the motion. To direct okay. KLH, the, well, you don't need a motion to direct KLH. You just have him prepare the specs, and then it'll be ready next month. Uh, okay. No. 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 John will prepare the specs. You have the list, so when you put them off the next month, it'll be ready to go. The specs are good. Right. You could just send me over the list. Yes, for tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. President Rock, I have one quick thing for discussion. If you can entertain it. Sure, okay. A couple things tonight. Um, and we, we had addressed this before, and I don't think it ever went anywhere about looking and getting a grant writer for the township. And it, it came up a couple of different. Um, ways. And I, I mean, I deal with grants every day in my little life, but I will tell just one thing to mention, like Andrew was talking about a boat launch. There's a grant out there right now for boat launches that cover 50% of the, it covers all the materials, everything else, and it'll actually allow our road department labor to be included in that part of the grant. So, I mean, it comes out to basically, to put a boat launch in, they'll pay the materials, they'll pay for everything, they'll come in, we do the labor, it's a minimal cost. But that, it's kind of, those things you've got to dig for, the same thing with Daniel mentioned with the, um, the fire department grant, that's a federal grant, but they're out there. And if we had a grant writer, it could not only really help everything in the township, but it also, all the grants that come off for the police, all the grants that come off for the fire departments, and. I don't think we, I, I think we may have advertised it, but I don't think we got a response. I can't remember. I so do recall when we, when we hired Mr. Butler, that was one of the things we had talked about. Yeah, yeah so that, that, but do you want to address that? Because I know we're not have a conversation. Yeah, I can just summarize that I prepared an RFP, just as helpful as some of the work that. Uh, it's prepared, we just never sent it out. Yeah, we that's. Never sent it out. It's, yeah. You know, it was early, it, you know, at the end of last year, it was a lot of stuff going on. And, that, and that, that's sort of what I recall. That I yeah. think that Mr. Butler being new in the position, I think that was something that we're sort of holding off on. Uh, I think from a budgetary standpoint, Dan, and the budget committee, I think you need to look and see what these costs might be to assume a position like that. Because we really get to do the, uh, the percentage of the grant. The percentage of the grant is going to pay for the yeah. second yeah. thing. So I don't see that already yeah. 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 around there. Yeah. yeah, but I do know that one of, the, one of the concerns that we had initially was the grid was just starting. And I think, you know, a lot of folks when we talked about bringing Greg Long was about who's going to get some grant money. Well, we didn't want that to uh, assume some of his other job responsibilities. So that's sort of why we said let's get the grant of the call. So if the RFP is done, it's done. You can get that out here. Mm -hmm. I'll get that. And I follow that. No problem. Thanks. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Uh, resolution. You want to talk about this one? Yes. We have a resolution to adopt 20. 2117 agreement to Kite Hollow Sand to return Jack Tom Road to Bridge Recovery Board under contract. Construction with 180 days of receiving grant funding for the Allegheny County Gaming Economic Development Corridor. However, however, I added that resolution on 
Friday before I posted the agenda on the website. And I got a call from KOH, not, not John, but one of his engineers, uh, that he had uh, accidentally used an older application that had an older resolution. So because of the deadline of the submission of the grant, which is this week, he gave me two resolutions to replace it that are related to both repairs. So basically, uh, KLH has applied for grant funding for the Jack Combo bridge repair replacement and also for the Kite Hollow sanitary emergency repair. Uh, so in order for us to get our submissions in on time, we have to pass these resolutions. So, so I we're going to move this resolution. Yeah, but not this one. So why don't we do a motion, we're going to do a motion to amend the agenda to remove item number one. Correct. And add two additional resolutions, is that right? Which I have written. Which Greg right. has written. So you want to do a motion to amend at least for, for those things? Okay. So I need a motion to uh, remove resolution number one, and then I can make it one motion to yeah, add one. And, to, and to add two motions to approve these uh, uh, grant funding opportunities. Second. Second, Rich. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. okay so I'll, I'll read the two motions. They do involve, they, so they do state the grant amount applied for, but also the local match. So just so you know, there is a local match for grant. You want to do them separately? I think you do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 okay, so we have motion number one. Yeah, motion number one. Uh, so a motion to adopt resolution 2021-17, which replaces this one. Authorizing the, fil the filing of application for funds with the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County for the Jack Tom Road Bridge replacement in the amount of $246,117 with a $35,725.81 local funding match. Does anyone need that to be rejected? That was rejected. That's Jack Tom Road. So the total grant is for two forty six one seventeen, two hundred forty six thousand, and the local match is thirty five thousand seven hundred twenty five dollars and eighty nine cents. I need the motion. So the Dan, second. Wow. Uh, <laughs> just a quick discussion. <laughs> Any discussion? <laughs> yes, I have. Yeah. Any discussion? Any yeah. public comment? Should be clapping. That's yes. kind of one. It's like, how did KLH use the wrong application? Isn't it that your job to write, at yeah. least use the right forms? It was because I had trouble getting into our Allegheny County site as a township because I had not been in it since Joel was in it. And I had to wait the process. So he gave me one. It, it, it was because I had to get in myself in order to get him in there to, to access the application. So how did you wind up using the wrong one, the wrong application? Um, I'm, I'm not sure, but it was still late because of my access to the account. No, I don't know if it was, if it was the wrong application or if it was actually just delayed because of getting to the, the Allegheny County site. Mm -hmm. it, was the, it was the wrong resolution for the application. Wrong resolution? Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? Thank you. Just a quick discussion point. We don't we don't have to take action on it, but I would like the the board to direct uh, Greg and the township manager to contact Senator Brewster, Representative Scare, and County Councilman Bob Acey for to request letters of support for these grants. So we don't we don't have to have a motion. We just have to direct Greg to ask for the letters of support. Okay. Well. That's on another issue, but we'll, we'll address that. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Do we need a roll call on this? Yes, roll call. I'm sorry. That's it. Commissioner Watt? Yes. Commissioner Putnam? Yes. yes. Commissioner Beckwith? Yes. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Roderick? Yes. Commissioner Boyer? Yes. President Roberts? Yes. Motion passes. All right, the second motion is to adopt resolution 2021-19, and I skipped 18 because we already have an 18 on the agenda, authorizing the filing of application for funds with the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County for the Kites Hollow Emergency Repair in the amount of $133,707 with a 
$69.87 local funding now. Motion. So moved. Two projects here seem to have been fast tracked in fairly quickly. Um, with this, uh, Jack Town Road's been about a year and a little over. No. All right. What are we doing with Forest Hill? That's like five years strong going nothing. Mr. Rudder supposedly applied for grants a year, two, three years ago. Talk to your state representative. I, no, I'm talking to you. Well, that's, you that's, that's, that's to approve the grant spot. But I, I, I understand. Why are we? I mean, we got two other projects that that money could be diverted to that. Well, we there. So, there, there I, I use the word disenfranchising voters down there, right? Well, and, and I, I will tell you this, and I, and I, we had a meeting with President Rocco, myself, Mr. Butler, with Allegheny County, and there's a potential solution that will cost the township zero to fix that. There, there's a non disclosure clause at this point because there's there's something and it'll, it'll be released in the next 20 to 30 days, but it could potentially be a zero cost to the township for a fix for that for four sales. All right, no, I think my point was made. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good job, Scott. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Commissioner Walker. Yes. Commissioner <coughs> Cook. Yes. Commissioner Beckwood. Yes. Commissioner Altieri. Yes. Commissioner Roderick. Yes. Mr. Porter. Yes. President Rock. Yes. Number, this will be motion three. Good enough? Okay. <coughs> motion to adopt resolution 2021-18 to retain Piper Sandler and Company to complete an analysis of the township's present debt and present present a bona fide proposal for the funding of the series 2012 and for the series 2017 debt obligations at no cost to the township. So moved. Uh, motion by Dan. Second. Second. Second by Tom. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> Items for consideration. Uh, motion to approve the commissioner's meeting minutes dated September 13th, 2021. So moved. Dan? Second. Second. Uh, Rich? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Motions to set trick or treat, Elizabeth Township trick or treat date for Sunday, October 31st between the hours of 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. Uh, so moved. Dan, second, uh, Joanne. Uh, all the, uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, uh, expenditure items. Expenditure items, these are all roll call, please. Motion to approve the township bill warrant dated September 13, 2021, in the amount of $221,559.62. So moved. Powell? Second. Second, Dan. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Watt? Yes. Mr. Cookman? Yes. Mr. Beckwith? Yes. Mr. Algeria? Yes. Commissioner Rodder? Yes. Mr. Boyer? Yes. President Rodder? Yes. Number two, motion to approve the sanitary bill warrant dated September 13, 2021, in the amount of $177,000.41. Need a motion, please. Uh, Joanne, second. Uh, Dan, any discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Watt? Yes. Commissioner Cookman? Yes. Commissioner Beckley? Yes. Commissioner Algeria? Yes. Commissioner Roderick? Yes. Mr. Fuller. Yes. President Rock. Yes. Motion to dis number three. Motion to disperse the 2021 Volunteer Fire Relief Association allocation of $57,613.14 to the volunteer fire companies of Elizabeth Township in the following amounts. Fire Department number one, $34,567.89. Blaine Hill, $11,522.62. 
Wayne Vista, $11,522.63. Need a motion, please. Dan? Second. Second, Kyle. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Walker? Yes. Commissioner Cosmo? Yes. Commissioner Beckwith? Yes. Commissioner Alcieri? Yes. Commissioner Roderick? Yes. Commissioner Foyer? Yes. yes. President Roberts? Yes. yes. Motion passed. Number four. Motion to enter an annual contract in 2022 with Hoffman's boarding kennels as the dog law enforcement officer for Elizabeth Township at a rate of $330 per month. I need a motion. So, uh, Richard, second. I'll second. Uh, Andrew, second. Any discussion? A little wider discussion. Go ahead. So, I read, read briefly through this and. Uh, There's nothing in there about cats, and cats can become a problem. And I remember we had a, there was another company that we had, a wild animal company that we, did. That we just decided to say goodbye to. Um, but let them take care of cats. No, but that's the simple answer. They, it, for the most part, there's very, very few that do with cats. Huh. That's the biggest issue down here, right? I don't know if it is. I don't have the invited for it, but it is. Remember, we had a discussion on this on the floor, please. Uh, no, sir. We already have a public comment, sir. I request this be a no kill no situation kill. as much as I can. Place the dogs. Well, again, all I can say is that the company that operates this is. Yeah, I think that the police put it on their Facebook too. I think when they get the dog, so they do they do make efforts to try and keep the owner back. To no, Hoffman's. Is that who you're referring to, Matt? No, I'm saying the police yeah. put it on the website. Oh yeah, the they, they put them on yeah. to try and get the. I thought you meant Hoffman's because they don't. No. And can I ask? Um, no, no. We're, we're, we have a motion on the floor. We have a, we have a. Uh, all right, go ahead. Uh, we have a motion on the floor. Any other discussion? <coughs> Roll call, please. Commissioner Walk. Yes. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Beckwith. Yes. Commissioner Alzieri. Yes. Commissioner Roderick. Yes. Commissioner Foyer. Yes. President Walker. Yes. Number five. Motion to authorize a one-time adjustment credit in the amount of one hundred and seventy-two dollars and forty-six cents for Sewage mm -hmm. Bill ETS one zero zero eight nine eight one eight. I need a motion. So moved. Kyle. Second. Second, Joanne. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Watt? Yes. Commissioner Kutop? Yes. Commissioner Beckowitz? Yes. Commissioner Nadiri? Yes. Commissioner Roderick? Yes. Commissioner Boyer? Yes. President Rockman? Yes. Number six. Motion to authorize a one time adjustment credit in the amount of $146.25. For sewage bill ETS 1004-0927. I need a motion, please. So moved. Kyle, second. Second, Joanne. Any discussion? Yeah, a little bit of discussion. So this does up, come up occasionally, and it's basically because the homeowner was never made aware that they had a separate bill for sanitary. Um, that comes through Pennsylvania American Water, who gives the bill to legal tax so there's a breakdown here and that's why it happened in both of these cases and it doesn't happen often but it as we've seen this does happen two or three times a year John is there or do you have any idea on how we could improve that or why does that come about uh, maybe it's not a question I'm at, I could ask you I'm not sure how it happens um, we can look into that I, I, don't, I asked Greg about it Yeah, I haven't done the police tax service yet as an amateur as I know. And I, I kind of want to know what, you know why this does happen. Like you said, it's not that often, but it does happen. Uh, that's my plan is to at least you know, have, a, have a meeting with them. Uh, talk to Matt about that then. <coughs> Any other discussion? And well, these, these people are paying their regular money. Yes. Right? This yeah. is just, I know, just that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. They are paying their regular bill. This was just a, a interest. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Well, I qualify. Um, roll call, please. Commissioner Walk. Yes. Commissioner Kuzma. Yes. Commissioner Beckwith. Yes. Commissioner Alzieri. Yes. Commissioner Roderick. Yes. Commissioner Boyer. Yes. President Rocker. Yes. Number seven. 
Motion to approve the 2022 non-uniform pension MMO in the amount of $109,057. So moved. Uh, Rob, second. second. And any discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Walker. Yes. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Beckman. Yes. Commissioner Alvier. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Commissioner Foyer. Yes. President Roberts. Yes. Number eight. Motion to approve the 2022 uniform pension MMO in the amount of $147, 147, 105000 dollars Motion to approve that, please. So moves. How? Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Walker. Yes. Commissioner Cookman. Yes. Commissioner Beckler. Yes. Commissioner Algier. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Commissioner Foyer. Yes. Commissioner Rocker. Number nine, motion to approve the 2022 Sanitary Authority Pension MMO in the amount of zero dollars. I like that motion. <laughs> Dan, I'll second. Any discussion? I would hope not. But there could be discussion. How many more years do we keep having to do this? Is I can find out. It's still retired. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Watt? Yes. Commissioner Kuzma? Yes. Mr. Beckley? Yes. Mr. Algeri? Yes. Mr. Roderick? Yes. Mr. Foyer? Yes. President Roderick? Yes. Number 10. Motion to apply the 2021 Municipal Pension State Aid to the following plans in accordance with the 2021 MMO. A. Elizabeth Township Pension Plan Non Uniform $67,161.96. Elizabeth Township Police Pension Plan Uniform $124,729.35. I need a motion, please. So moved. Uh, Dan, second. Joanne, any discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Walker. Yes. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Beckman. Yes. Commissioner Algeri. Yes. Commissioner Roderick. Yes. Commissioner Foyer. Yes. President Roderick. Yes. Motion passes. We need a motion for adjournment, please. 